Did you understand you're charged with unauthorized use of a vehicle? That's a state jail felony. The range of punishment is anywhere from 180 days up to two years in the state jail facility and up to a $10,000 fine. Did you understand? Yes, Your Honor. If you have a plea with the state, the court does not have to follow your plea. If for any reason the court does not follow your plea and gives you more than you bargained for, the fact that you entered a plea will not be used against you and you will be allowed to withdraw your plea. Did you understand? Yes, Your Honor. Did you understand you have a right to jury trial, a right for you or your attorney to cross-examine and confront any witnesses the state would call in the right to remain silent? Sure. Did you understand by entering this plea, you were giving up those rights? Sure. And did you intend to give up those rights and enter into a plea in this case? Sure. Did you understand if the court were to grant your application for deferred adjudication, if for any reason your deferred adjudication were revoked, uh, the court could find you guilty and sentence you up to two years in the state jail facility? Yes, Counsel, has your client been able to provide you with any defenses? Yes, ma'am. Do you believe he has a rational as well as a factual understanding of the charges against him? Yes, Your Honor. Do you believe he's currently competent and was legally sane at the time of the offense? Yes, ma'am. Mr. Puente, has anyone threatened you, coerced you, or placed you in fear to get you to enter the plea? No, ma'am. Anyone promised you anything other than the plea? No, ma'am. Are you satisfied with the way you've been represented? Yes, Your Honor. Are you a U.S. citizen? Yes, ma'am. Court will find that defendant has knowingly and voluntarily waived his right to jury trial off the record for a moment. So those who are talking behind the court reporter, you all need to talk to the deputy and ask them to move you to that end. All right, did you review the plea bargain page? Sure. According to the plea bargain agreement, there's a $500 fine and the state is recommending deferred adjudication and there's to be restitution to the complainant. Did you understand that to be the plea? Yes, Your Honor. Defense? Yes, it is, Your Honor. State? It is, Your Honor. Did you review the waiver of appeal paragraph with your attorney? Did you understand it? Did you sign it in both places? Yes, Your Honor. Did you understand by signing that you're waiving your right to appeal the only items that can be appealed are written pretrial motions that have been filed, heard, and ruled upon by the court. Did you understand? Sure. Counselor, have there been any such motions? No, Your Honor. Outside the agreement, the state is requesting that your community supervision be for a term of two years. There be a TAP evaluation and 120 hours of community service restitution. Did you understand that's a recommendation from the state and the court does not have to follow those recommendations? Then to the offenses charge, how do you plead guilty, not guilty, or no contest? No contest. State, any evidence? Yes, ma'am. No objection, Your Honor. All right, State, you may continue to confer. Did you review the document entitled Waiver and Consent to Stipulation of Testimony and Stipulations with your attorney? Did you understand it? Did you sign it in all the appropriate places? Yes, Your Honor. Again, did you understand you have a right to jury trial, a right for you or your attorney to cross-examine and confront any witnesses, the state would call in the right to remain silent. Yes, Did you understand that today the state will be presenting evidence in the form of witnesses, statements, and police reports, but most importantly, there will be no live testimony. Did you understand? Sure. Court will find that defendant has knowingly and voluntarily waived and consented to stipulation of testimony and stipulations. Court will accept into evidence state's exhibits one and attachments and review the same. All right, after reviewing state's exhibits one and attachments, the court will find there is sufficient evidence to find you guilty. The court will defer finding of guilt as you've applied for deferred adjudication. Are you proceeding with sentencing? Yes, Your Honor. Anything you want to say on behalf of your client? Your Honor, it's remorseful. It, well, actually, he realized he made a stupid mistake paying somebody for $1,500 for a $20,000 vehicle. But he's not learned from it. He's ready to move on. And uh, he's uh, asking the court for a deferred adjudication to give him a chance to keep this on his record. Are you employed? Yes, ma'am. What do you do? Uh, work for a moving company, Town Services of San Antonio. How old are you? 25. Have you ever had a car before? Yes, ma'am. Did you buy this car you had before or no? Uh, it was given to my mom. To mm -hmm. me, my first car. Oh, it was given to you by your mom? I had, I had a daughter in uh, 2021. 20, 20, All right. So did she change the... Yes, ma'am. Title in your name? Yes, ma'am. Was... All right. So this car that you're paying fifteen hundred dollars for, that's actually worth twenty thousand dollars, was a title given to you? No, no. So, yes, ma'am. So I don't understand why would you think that this was a legitimate sale if you pay fifteen hundred dollars for a vehicle and nobody's giving you a title? Yes, ma'am. I mean, you're saying yes, ma'am, but I'm trying to figure out. You give somebody $1,500 for a vehicle. That's what you're saying. The vehicle, as you know, is worth more than $20,000. So you bought a car before, had one in your possession before, and you said your mother changed your title, the title over for you. So this person that you're saying you paid $1,500 for the car, 
Did they give you a title? No, did you ask for a title? Why didn't you ask for a title? No, I didn't. I wasn't thinking. I'm sorry, what? I wasn't thinking. I was just. No, you didn't ask for a title because you knew there was an issue with it. It's sort of like if somebody, if I see somebody with a Lamborghini and they come up to me and tell me, oh, if you give us $10,000 for this Lamborghini, we'll sell it to you. I know that Lamborghini is worth more than $10,000. It's running well. There's not a problem. I open, I open the hood and the engine's there. Everything's great. And I give them that $10,000. If I think it's a legitimate sale, the first thing I'm going to want to know is, hey, I need the title or something because I got to get insurance on this vehicle. Did you get insurance on this vehicle? No, no. How long did you have this vehicle? Um, two weeks. Did you open up the glove compartment? No, no. So you didn't put insurance on the vehicle? No, no. So you're just driving around in a vehicle with no insurance. When your mother turned over the vehicle, her vehicle to you yes. and you got the title from it, did you have insurance on that? No. So basically this whole thing about you not knowing that if somebody uh, gave you a $20,000 for a $20,000 car for $1,500, if that's true, right. you knew that the car was stolen. You knew there was an issue. And here's the problem. Whoever that car belongs to, they have the complainant's name listed. They didn't want anybody else driving their vehicle, some complete stranger that they didn't give permission to. Do you understand? No, I do. How old, do you have children? So have How old are they? Two and one. Oh, two and one. How would you, do you have a car? No, I don't right now. All right. Does your mom have a car? No, no, she doesn't. She, uh, stepdad does. Oh, your stepfather has a car. Yes, and does your mom use the stepdad's car? No, she doesn't drive. All right. So do you love your stepfather? No, How would you feel if somebody like you were to take his car and say, oh, somebody offered me his car for $200 and they take it for $200. Then they stand before a judge and they say, no, I didn't get I didn't get a title. Uh, didn't get it insured. But hey, I got a great deal. Yeah. You see where we're going? Yeah, sure. Is there an amount to pay for the complainant? I guess it's amount for use. And I'm sure they want their car detailed because somebody's been in it. So if they want it detailed, let the court know. And you're going to pay for that detailing. Yes, and guess what? If you want a good detailing, it's about 800. But since she probably wants to fumigate and everything else, because who knows been in her seat, they, there may be more. All right. There's a $500 fine that would be probated. Thank you. Three years deferred adjudication. There's to be restitution, if any, to Francis Hardy, H A R T Y. 120 hours of community service restitution. I'll order parenting classes. Once he completes that, uh, community service hours will be deemed satisfied. There's to be regular reporting by Zoom or in person. There's to be random regular UAs, a TAP evaluation out of custody, uh, follow recommendations, proof of employment within 30 days, no employment as a home health care provider or with minors, field visits, one time per month for five months, and then at probation's discretion. Uh, probation, is there anything else? Is there anything else you need from the court to be successful? Yeah. Did you review the document entitled Trial Court Certification of Defendant's Rights to Appeal with your attorney? Did you understand it and did you sign it? Yeah. Because this is a plea bargain agreement, because I followed your plea bargain agreement, and because you waive your right to appeal, you do not have the court's permission to appeal. Do you understand? Sure. All right. We can go off the record. Here's the thing. Sometimes probation will ask for a theft course. Here's my theft course tailored to your unauthorized use. Do not drive in a vehicle that is not yours. Do not pay less than the appropriate value for a vehicle unless somebody is going to give you the title to that vehicle and you get insurance on it. Do you understand? Sure. Because I can tell you right now, there are some people 
if they report their car is stolen and then they see somebody driving around in it, they're going to have an issue. We had a case in this court and you know what it was about? A guy ended up being shot. He died. And you know why? Because he was driving in someone else's vehicle that was stolen. And that person was like, that's my vehicle. You understand? Mm-hmm. All right. Good luck to you. Okay, I'm ready to yes. Thank you. Are y'all ready? We're not. Did you understand you're charged with cruelty to non-livestock, torture, et cetera? And that is a third degree felony. Range of punishment is anywhere from two to 10 years in prison and up to a $10,000 fine. Did you understand? Yes, Your Honor. If you have a plea agreement with the state, the court does not have to follow your plea. If for any reason the court does not follow your plea and gives you more than you bargained for, the fact that you entered a plea will not be used against you and you will be allowed to withdraw your plea. Did you understand? Yes, Your Honor. Did you understand you have a right to jury trial, a right for you or your attorney to cross-examine and confront any witnesses the state would call in the right to remain silent? Yes, Your Honor. Did you understand by entering this plea bargain agreement you were giving up those rights? Yes, Your Honor. And did you intend to give up those rights and enter into a plea in this case? Yes, Your Honor. Counsel, has your client been able to provide you with any defenses? Yes, Your Honor. Do you believe she has a rational as well as a factual understanding of the charges against her? Yes, Your Honor. Do you believe she's currently competent and was legally sane at the time of the offense? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, Ms. Malone, has anyone threatened you, coerced you, or placed you in fear to get you to enter this plea? No, Your Honor. Anyone promised you anything other than the plea? No, Your Honor. Are you satisfied with the way you've been represented? Yes, Your Honor. Are you a U.S. citizen? Yes, Your Honor. The court will find that defendant has knowingly and voluntarily waived her right to jury trial. Showing you the plea bargain page. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? Yes, Your Honor. According to the plea, punishment is to be assessed at four years in the prison, and there are no applications. Did you understand that to be the plea? Yes, Your Honor. Defense? That is the plea agreement, Your Honor. State? Yes, Your Honor. Showing you the waiver of appeal paragraph. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? Did you sign it in both places? Yes, Your Honor. Did you understand by signing that you're waiving your right to appeal? The only items that can be appealed are written pretrial motions that have been filed, heard, and ruled upon by the court. Did you understand? Yes, Your Honor. Counselor, have there been any such motions? No, Your Honor. Then to the offense as charged, how do you plead? Guilty, not guilty, or no contest? Guilty. State any evidence? Yes, Your Honor. I offer State's Exhibit 1 in the attachments. Any no objection? objection? Any objection? No objection. I'm going to show you what's entitled waiver and consent to stipulation of testimony and stipulations. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? Did you sign it in all the appropriate places? Yes, Your Honor. Again, did you understand you have a right to jury trial, a right for you or your attorney to cross-examine and confront any witnesses the state would call in the right to remain silent? Yes, Your Honor. Did you understand that today the state will be presenting evidence in the form of witnesses' statements and police reports? Yes, but most importantly, there will be no live testimony. Did you understand? Yes, Your Honor. Court will find that defendant has knowingly and voluntarily waived and consented to stipulation of testimony and stipulations. Court will accept into evidence states exhibits one and attachments and review the attachments. The court will find there is sufficient evidence to find you guilty. The court will find you guilty. Are you proceeding with sentencing? Yes, Your Honor. If I could just say one thing on the record. Yes. Um, There were some mental health concerns, but we did have her refer to Carruthers. She was examined for competency and sanity, and both of those have been resolved. All right. So she was deemed to be competent? She Yes, she does have some severe mental health issues, but she is competent, and she was sane at the time of the offense. All right. So why are you strangling a two-month-old cat? I'm sorry, Your Honor. No, I mean, I know you're sorry. You're saying you're sorry you did it. I'm asking why. Why would you do that? Um, I was under the influence of drugs. But you were eating at Sonic when this happened? Yes, ma'am. What drugs are you saying you were under the influence of? Uh, Methamphetamine. Okay, so why did the meth make you strangle a cat? I'm not sure, ma'am. I also have mental health issues. And what's the mental health issues? Um, Bipolar. All right, so again, we're back to the point. So I'm assuming, and correct me if I'm wrong, you were not on your medications? No, ma'am. All right. So you take meth. So how does that translate into strangling a cat? Your Honor, there's there's no good explanation for strangling a cat. Um, Well, no, I mean, here's the thing. Sometimes you're on drugs and you do certain things. So I'm just trying to figure out if meth caused her to strangle a cat or is there something else going on? 
according to the diagnosis from the psychologist, there was also some issues with bipolar disorder. She's when you mix being bipolar with meth and homelessness, it's all just a bad combination. Uh, I've asked her what her plans for the future will be. She's indicated she wants to work as a waitress. She eventually, once she's done with prison time, will live with her mother. She wants to avoid the bad people and the bad situations that she was involved with. Okay, so how does taking meth, being bipolar, equal to strangling the cat? As we said earlier, there's no excuse. There's but no, no I'm, I'm asking her. Sure. Like, what was your thought process? Because what I'm reading is there were two tabby cats running around. And so what go from two tabby cats running around, enjoying themselves to double knotting a rope around one tabby's net? I don't have an excuse, Your Honor. Well, I mean, I know you don't have an excuse, but I'm trying to figure out what was your thought process? I'm not sure what my thought process was at the time. Well, I mean, did you have a rope on you and go get a rope or how did that work out? I don't remember because I was on drugs. All right. Anything else? Okay. All right, I'm gonna sentence you to four years in prison. You credit for any time served. There's to be no contact with any animals or children. Well, I should say, or minors. So you're not to have any contact with minors or children. Do you understand? Yes, Your Honor. Or animals. Yes, Your Honor. So what that means is if you decide to give birth and have a child, Child Protective Services, if they're doing their job, they're supposed to come in and remove that child. Do you understand? Yes, Your Honor. All right. Anything else with regards to sentencing? No, Your Honor. I'm going to show you what's entitled trial court certification of defendants' rights to appeal. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? And did you sign it? Yes, Your Honor. Because this is a plea bargain agreement, because I followed your plea bargain agreement, and because you waive your right to appeal, you do not have the court's permission to appeal. Because this is a felony conviction, you're not allowed to own or possess any weapons or ammunition. If you have a question over what a weapon or ammunition is, you'll need to speak to an attorney. Do you understand? Yes, Your Honor. All right. And just one moment. All right. Who is the man you were with at the at the drive in? Uh, Jonathan Smith. Jonathan Smith. Yes. All right. And there should be no contact with Jonathan Smith. All right. That's all. That's it, Jess. Thank you. You're welcome.